You're listening to After No War, broadcasting from the beautiful South Berlin. Set no sandwich. Welcome, 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 dear listeners. Welcome to the den. Welcome to After No War. My name is Nick Hart. It's pantomime season early. It's not Christmas. We've got Millwall versus Leeds for you. Um, I'm sure somewhere in this sellout crowd is Widow Twanky, Dick Whittington's cat. Wishy washy, I'm sure he's here too. Two teams are just coming out onto the field. I'm working my team sheet from memory, listeners. I haven't got it to hand. But uh, Bart Bielkowski is back in goal in place of the injured Martias Sarkic. We've got back line of Ryan Leonard, surprisingly, but my son might say Jake Cooper and Murray Wallace. Nowhere's Harding, who I thought did well up there at Birmingham on the two. Wing, wing back positions, we've got Brooke Norton Cuffey and we've got Ryan Longman this afternoon. Midfield two is Billy Mitch and if West Welcome return for me for Casper Denor, our Belgian uh, mystery man. Up front, Kevin Nisbet, Tom Bradshaw, and amazingly, from what some might say, we've a lot of been calling for it online, but uh, Fleming is on the bench in his place comes Luton Town Loney, Alan Campbell. Birdshit Corner is living up to its reputation this afternoon, listeners. Seat number two, right by the side of me, is quite literally covered in birdshit. I've actually sent it in to Steve Kavanagh. I think he's a fucking disgrace, if you're listening, Steve. Um, yeah, bird, literally Birdshit Corner for this sellout crowd. It's a bit early for the football, don't you think, listeners? 12 o'clock starts on Sunday, thanks to the New World Order, the international cabal that is Sky Television. Bill Crowning, good voice. Well, we're hoping this afternoon for a new word I found for you. This is badinage, badinage, light, playful banter or raillery. We've already had a, a video pre-match asking for to err on the side of um, badinage. They didn't quite say that. Rather than um, Jimmy Savile, tragic um, side of life. We'll see what we get. This is Mill versus Leeds. And as you can hear, the crowd is full-throated, full-throated. I think the badinage might get a little bit fruity as the game goes along. We'll see. Daniel Farker, the, um, that's a great name, by the way, isn't it? Replete with uh, double entendre. Daniel Farker is on screen. He's uh, mentioned the atmosphere here in the crowd. He says, the dent is an unbelievably tough place to go. It can also be oppressive for our young players. It's a tough place. We've spoken about this, we can prepare them in a theoretical way, but to bring it on the pitch when it counts is one of our tasks. Um, it's one of the, uh, the great theatres of English football, dear listeners, in my humble opinion. If you can play here, you can play anywhere. The crowd is filling up now. There's a few empty seats a few minutes ago, but it is filling up rapidly. It's an official sellout. We have a minute's applause now for the uh, victims of the Libya and Moroccan earthquake. Both teams come into this fixture really needing to kickstart their season, dear listeners. Mill sitting in 12th position, playing 5 1 2, drawn 1, lost 2.7. Um, Leeds 15th, three places below us in the uh, early table. Play 5 1, just one drawn, three though, lost one. Um, point six in their case. So both teams have had a moderate start to the season. Both could do with um, an electric start today. And we've kicked off. Early ball forwards for the Lions in towards Tom Bradshaw. A little break into the area. Can he get his one an early corner inside the first few seconds? This game is, of course, going out live worldwide on Sky Television. There will be people watching in far-flung places from Timbuktu to Thamesmead whose only words will be Tom Bradshaw in it comes near post it's headed on across the face of the Leeds goal front foot football is what the crowd are paying for listeners none of Gary Rowett's low block malarkey that um, was mentioned in an article on London News Online we want it high block whatever that might be I don't know if that's the opposite to a low block that's just defensive football low block isn't it Long throw in from Ryan Leonard. Just going past the first minute mark. It's gone for another throw in on the right side. It's a grey sky, a little bit of sunshine peeping through. Flags fluttering gently in the breeze on the docker stand opposite me. Ball into the Leeds box. That's going to fall to Brooke Norton Cuff. Lovely bit of skill. Edge of the penalty area. Ball into Tom Bradshaw. 
cross block there. Leeds under pressure. Crowd buying for it. They want blood, listeners. They want blood. It's hard not to fall into that kind of language when you're talking about such a pantomime fixture, isn't it? Generally speaking, I don't, I don't like to uh, overreact and indulge in hyperbole, but you know how it goes. Uh, Throw-in taken by the goalkeeper well enough. Incidentally, Millwall are attacking the away end in the first half, as per the writings of uh, the Venerable Bede, who's a Bible, apparently, from 9th century England, has been discovered with Bede's own notes in there. And one of the notes did say, in Old English, early Anglo-Saxon, that Millwall must always attack the away end in the first half. It was in the, the Observer. Well, Bielkowski back in goal in place of the injured Matthias Sarkic, who was in, apparently did his quad in ahead of the Birmingham trip a couple of weeks ago now. Um, the only occasion we've seen Bart this season, he was player of the season, was it twice in a row? A couple of years ago? We saw him against the, the Reading under-21s in the uh, Caribou Cup. He looked very rusty. Tom Bradshaw winning another left-sided corner there. But Gary Rowett says he has no qualms playing uh, Bart Bielkowski this afternoon, which is a Good word. I'm going to start using qualms more in my, my everyday language. Ryan Longman getting, getting the crowd behind him here. There's going to be a left-sided corner. A little bit of arging, argy in the six-yard box. There's a packed six-yard box. We've got Leonard in there. We've got Jake. We've got Murray pushing, shoving going on. And it comes from Longman. It's punched clear by the Leeds goalkeeper. Ball over the top for Nisbet to chase down. That's going to be over, over here. It's going to be a throw in for Leeds. Five minutes in. Right start by the Lions, though, listeners. Yeah, this is the North. That's a great take and turn. Mill maintaining pressure. It's been pretty much Mill pressure since kickoff. Longman with a nice long ball. Paraphrase it. Falls to Jake Cooper inside the box. Can he get a shot away? Falls to uh, Campbell. Shouts for a penalty, not given. There were a bit of mayhem in the box there, listeners. There was a shout for a penalty. I didn't see enough of it. You may see more on your Sky television, wherever you are in this world. It's Mill now maintaining the pace. Longman now have another floated ball in. There's Tom Bradshaw has gone over the top. Oh, he's kicked off the line. Referee's given a free kick. I think he's saying the goalkeeper was bought there. Almost beat the man and went out into the net, but it cleared off the line in this intense early pressure by Millwall. Comes all seven minutes. Crowd are loving it. This is what they want. Lee's hoping to weather this storm, I'd imagine. They've not even been out of their own half there. They're just crossing into the... Lions half, seven and a half minutes into the game. The full repertoire coming out now, listeners. But Leeds are breaking forwards. Whilst the, uh, the litany of Jimmy Savile's crimes are explored in, in the uh, medium of song on the left there. Ball into the mill box. That's cleared at the six-yard line there. Leeds left hand uh, throw in, nine minutes in. A huge um, PR exercise trying to avoid tragedy chanting as it's called um, here comes Leeds down the left that's a great tackle there it's gone for a left-sided corner first move forward really by Leeds 10 minutes in it's gonna be a left-sided corner more of an old school one there for you dirty northern pass the ball into the near post it's bouncing around it's gone for a goal kick Jake Cooper speaking to Millwall TV says he wants to get this season up and running I agree with you Jake been a funny old start to the season it's um that august is always difficult holidays i've been away myself you dare say you've been away dear listeners i haven't seen you for much have i and um this feels like the proper start to the season now big game big game atmosphere and a win for both sides really will be seen as equally important so both both will be looking for it this is a left-sided free kick for leeds with 12 and a half minutes in and it comes it's a deep one but comes and takes and clears, punched it away. They didn't quite get a hold of that, but it did go in the right direction. Ball breaks, bumped over the middle. This is Tom Bradshaw, it's just slightly over hit. The goalkeeper's come out of his box to head it sideways. That was just slightly over, overcooked there by Billy Mitchell. There was a moment where Tom Bradshaw was through on goal. 13 minutes. It's Leeds on the left now. Got one, two on the left side, chance to get a cross in. It's cut out. Well done, that's a free kick drawn there. That's going to take the sting out of that situation. Come towards the 14th minute, listeners. It's been a pretty good start by Millwall. We've had a number of breaks forward. This is uh, Tom Bradshaw putting the work in, to say the least. Chasing down a, a ball into the corner. The uh, 14 beats him to it. Oh, the goalkeeper almost overhits it there. He's put his own defence into a problem here. This is Bradshaw. Handball, handball. It's got to be a handball. Has the referee not seen that? That... 
the uh, player was on the floor. Ball was played into him. I thought it touched his hand. Referee didn't see it. I guess uh, it's got to be a pretty, pretty next play flow. Uh, and this bit clips on the, in the middle. There's his atmosphere. I think you're going to start to get to this referee. This is, gives Leeds a chance to break forwards now on the left. Ball into the middle. There's one, two, one nil Leeds. And they've gone over to um, remonstrate with the crowd there. That's going to get the crowd fired up if nothing else does. I thought that was a, um, well, it should have been a penalty in my opinion. I've not seen the replay. And then Kevin Nisbet got clipped. Referees let play flow. 1 0 leads. 14 minutes. After a bright start, the Lions fall behind to Leeds' first real chance, I think it's fair to say. Aided and abetted by the referee. We're just starting to concede the midfield a little bit, but a second ball's not being picked up well enough in midfield for me. This gives Leeds a chance on, what, 18, coming nearly 19 minutes to break down the left. The uh, midfielder Denor and, and Mitchell is untried so far, really. Free kick for Millwall, just inside their own half, 23rd minute. Longman to take it. Just left of the, uh, of the D, just inside our own half. Rod forwards. Clear push on Jake Cooper, nothing given. If that's not a blatant push on Jake Cooper, I don't know what is right in front of the referee listeners. There's a chance for Leeds now, the 10 puts it wide well, from a very tight angle. Mill Dodger, a bullet there. Brooklyn Cuffey brings it away though. End to end stuff, he's on a run here, listeners. He's taking it one step too far, unfortunately. That was a nice run out of defence by Brooke Milton Cuffey. As the man says, how is that not a foul? Well, it was a foul, but they choose not to give it against Jake Cooper. Floodlights on now inside the den. It's getting dark. Grey skies. I think referees arrive on a game like this at a, a venue like Millwall, determined not to prove their home bias. They're certainly doing that so far. He's away biased. Ryan Longman again. I've lost. It's starting to lose count how many corners there. Quite a few. And it comes. It's a deeper one. No one there, unfortunately. Over hit. This is Alan Campbell. He's been. I was going to ask the question: Are we missing Ryan uh, Zian Fleming, listeners? At the moment, I'd say Campbell is as anonymous as Zian has been this season. So uh, no, at the moment. But um, not sure we've gained much so far with Campbell. I don't understand the um, referee. It's a general thing. This is not the only referee that's uh, been uh, less a fair, shall we call it? Let's call it that, on Jake Cooper. It seems to be that because he's tall and big, um, fouls are tolerated on him. Do you understand that, dear listeners? I don't. It seems to be a widespread attitude. 32 minutes. Bradshaw's got an amazing ability to win the ball. So we've hit some long balls at him. And he's been getting in front of uh, taller, bigger players. This is Millwall being pushed backside, but we are in possession as a consequence. 34 and a half minutes. Ryan Longman, he's impressed so far this half. I've been um, struck by Ryan Longman. Otherwise, it's been a fairly um, energetic, without much um, precision performance by the lines. Nice one too. Murray Wallace now just tucks it inside to Longman on the left side. Can you get a cross in? sprays it this is Denor this is Campbell sorry the Dewey Scalak lookalike he's been reasonably anonymous for me so far 35 minutes on the right side now with Cuffey oh, one two can he get to that that's over here that's gone for a goal kick Sunday morning football doesn't agree with me listeners does it you it's too early it's too um, alien a time it's all in the, in the service of course of the uh, Sky Television the Paymasters it don't mean to say you have to like it it's a reality that you have to accept but you don't have to like it do you I think who said that that was uh, Indiana Jones and I'm with Indiana on that this is uh, Ryan Longman 50-50 header Leeds man's gone down if you're going to have a 50-50 header make sure the Leeds player goes down hurt and he has I think he's alright he's rolling around with such flamboyance it's like um Almost theatrical. The ominous figure of Lurch appears to the uh, prostate figure of the Leeds player, just to make sure no one runs on the pitch, I suppose, or has a as a pop. Looks like he's um, got some claret coming out of his of his uh, brow. Medical treatment must be called a wanker. 
the appearance of Lurch on the scene always reminds me of the, um, the recounts I've read of the first glimpses of the British tanks on the battles of the Somme 1916 these huge lumbering metal monsters that appear that no one's ever seen before crushing all before them my player of the half so far has been Ryan Longman he's been all involved a lot and his uh, crossing look, looks accurate and he's made himself a it's a lovely cross field ball there as I'm swaffling to Bradshaw finds Norton Cuffey on the right side balls into the box this bit under attention Howells for penalty not going to be given this is Longman again this is going to be uh, Billy Mitch shoots over the bar from distance I'd say the game has been evenly balanced obviously with that precious one goal lead for Leeds then they'll feel themselves to have um, prevailed in the half but it's 50-50 for the most part this might be famous last words it's going to be a left sided corner three minutes in of the five and it comes it's a deep one headed away by Ryan Leonard at the, at the far post there's half time listeners the referee can expect a few comments coming his way as he leaves the field and uh, there we are Lurch and Scharnhorst has come out to meet him to escort him to Scarpa Flow. Achtung, Mailball. The half time break, dear listeners, on what was, a, in truth, a fairly depressing <laughs> result yesterday. I thought we might enliven the proceedings somewhat with our pundit question. Punditgames.co.uk, as you all well know, Achtung Mill is in partnership with Pundit Games. Every game sold, and Christmas is looming, don't forget. Every game sold generates a donation to the Lions Food Hub. It's a great game, it's a great calls quiz game. You score goals by answering questions from various um, genres, international periods. This one's a uh, question I've got here for you is uh, the Premier League in the 2000s. So, you know, relatively recently, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, punditgames.co.uk. Check it out. It's a great game. I'll give you the answer to this question at the end of today's show. But here it is, um, our pundit question. So, the question goes, before Luka Modric, the Premier League had another Croatian midfield dynamo. This man could score goals from just about anywhere with either foot. Just ask Tottenham and Portsmouth fans, or else Harry Redknapp, who adored him. So another Croatian midfielder, senior career cover game uh, to clubs such as Rangers, the New York Cosmos, QPR on loan, Dynamo Kiev, Tottenham Hotspur, 49 appearances between 2009 and 12. Then three seasons at Portsmouth, that must have been their Premier League period. 83 appearances for Pompey, nine goals for Pompey, nine goals for Spurs. He then went to Hajak Splits, um, Dynamo Zagreb. Played for Croatia national side 81 times between 2004 and 2013. 16 goals as well as the under-21s. So a Croatian midfield Dynamo could score goals most famously, perhaps, in the Premier League with Tottenham Hotspur between 2009 and 12, 49 appearances, 9 goals, and then Pompey, 2006 to 9, uh, 83 appearances, 9 goals. Croatian International, 81 appearances, 16 goals. So who is that man? I'll tell you at the, at the end of today's show. Achtung, Mailball. We're just waiting for the return of the players, the second half listeners. The uh, Leeds goalkeeper's out, Bart has just come out. So we're waiting for the rest of the sides to return for the second half. Just a few thoughts uh, from that first half. I, I, my worry is that uh, in midfield we're getting a little bit, um, we're coming out a little bit second best. They've passed their way from us a good few times in that first period. Up front, well, we, we're, lacking, we're lacking some artistry. We've, we've done a lot of hit and hope, as is the way of all this season players like Campbell have been anonymous anonymous um, we haven't seen an awful lot of, of Nisbet up front we haven't really given him a, an opportunity or a chance to get a shot away on goal so we, we need some artistry I'm thinking of the obvious candidates in Marku I'm thinking of SA at some stage will we see Fleming um, so far I would say Campbell has not really given us anything more than what we've seen from Zian Fleming all season which is not much there come the Leeds uh, players and the Lions will be following very shortly. Big second half for the Lions. We need to show more than what we saw really. We had some moments in that first period, early on especially. But for last chunks of it we were quiet and that's not good enough. Bradshaw is, as I praised him in the first half, for his ability to win the ball. 
unexpectedly so from long balls, but I'm not sure it's a great tactic to be pumping long balls at him because he does lack the, the inches. This is Denor, a great feeds pressure on side from the right side, shot on target, it's blasted the goal, it's gone from right side of corner. Very narrow angle, nice early start by the Lions, 46 minutes, right side of corner. Little one-two, we opened up their defence on that occasion. They did that plenty to us in the first half and it was nice to see as a means of starting the second half well. So anyway, it's going, to, it's going to be a throw in, not a corner. Very dim outside now, this is floodlights full on. One o'clock in the afternoon. We haven't even officially crossed into autumn yet, have we? No pressing high. Ryan Leonard does well there. Gets his shirt tucked by the 29. Surely a, red, a yellow card. Referee not forgiving anything. Right sided free kick. Millwall coming towards 49 minutes. The referee's a clown there, listeners. An utter, utter clown. Norton Cuffey now trying to thread his way through. He's been imaginative. He's just run into one white shirt too many on that um, right side. But he's always willing to have a go, and I like that. Brooke Norton Cuffey. This is the 29 now, right side, across the face of the middle goal. No one in there, thankfully. He's entitled to complain no one was in there as well. That's a decent cross, 54 minutes. Well, we've not been given much to get behind, really, but the crowd are always here. Despite all the um, pre-match beseeching not to overdo the uh, the banter. I haven't really heard too much this afternoon, to be honest. This is proper support here, though, listeners. If only the team were up to the uh, levels of support they were being given. We're all pressing forwards now with Ryan Leonard. Goes past his man, the 29, cuts inside. This is uh, Campbell and Leonard combining. Ball into the box. It flicks away. Falls to Murray Wallace on the left. This is long one now, 62 minutes. Cuts back inside, his cross is overdone. <laughs> Let's just say it's overdone. It's like me if I tried to do a roast dinner, listeners. Burn it. Who's this coming? This is uh, Fleming and SA coming in. Looks like Watmore coming in. 63 minutes, so uh, three way switch. SA on the left just tries to cut it inside. Those white shirts were there, unfortunately. They've defended well against us, in, in all honesty. We've struggled to carve out much on, on either flank. That's, out for a throw in 65 minutes 67 minutes they're going to be a Leeds left side corner halfway through the second half um, obviously the substitutions have yet to fully take effect we've looked a little bit brighter with the introduction of the likes of SA haven't really seen much of Fleming yet to, to really comment um, rain starting to come down I see out there it's actually ch chucking it down quite hard what to say I mean Leeds have defended well against us I think that's that's um, the, the task for Mill still is to try and generate some artistry to get past this Leeds defence really I think we have the players to do it let's hope we've got the time to do it within Not much movement for Millwall 75 minutes listeners we're pressing forwards but uh, no one moving no, no one with the uh, carving out ability well, that's a good ball there from Jake Cooper trying to find a mark couldn't quite take it unfortunately over on the left side this is Leeds in space on the edge of the day this could be 2-0 oh it is 2-0 ball scuffed through to the left side post slammed in from home I thought we'd missed it for a moment but no 77 minutes that's 2-0 and I think game set and match listeners in all honesty people streaming for the exits I'm going to start a new statistic listeners how many full houses has Gary Rowett had without actually exploiting the middle situation or getting a result in all honesty by whatever method you want um, this is another one today we've had a full house we had a good crowd I mean you could hear the support that the crowd have been given across the whole game and in all honesty we've never really fired we've never really come to life um, criticism of the management yeah why not why not he, he's in charge he gets the money he's, he sets the tone he sets the tactics but we haven't really got going yet again in front of what I don't know how many, 17,000, 18,000 in here today. It finishes with Millwall on the losing end of the deal. So, um, Gary Rowett, it's on you, one, mate, in my opinion. It's going to go for a corner, right side of the corner. Ticking towards 80 minutes. We need, we need something here, listeners. It's going to be SA to take, I think. It is. It's a deep one. Falls to Mark on the edge of the penalty area. Tries to jink his way through, find some space, but it does instead give Leeds the chance to break. If fans for the 24, it should be 3 0. There it is. 18 minutes, 3 0. 
all game they've been breaking well they've been breaking and, and carving um, routes for our defence and uh, we're pressing forwards late in the game chasing a game that maybe we didn't need to be chasing I don't know that was a well, well taken break and a good goal I think Leeds are deservedly 3-0 ahead listeners I can't tell it, put it any other way to you a few wanker signs few offer rings out that ain't going to happen I'm afraid that's all we're going to take out of the day dear listeners Savile's just come in for Billy Mitch listeners if it makes any difference to anyone 83 minutes in another break for Leeds three goals three breaks effectively it's been for them isn't it here they come now looking for a fourth the 12 through on goal that's a Mill fortunate not to give away a penalty there I thought as he was taking the shot he got clipped from behind but anyway referees not give it what can we make of this uh, result listeners it's 87 minutes in I'm going to call it a result now we we're not going to make a comeback at this late stage. So I'm going to say that we've been tactically outthought and outthought and, and outthought. TH and F. Um, apart from that early blistering start when uh, the atmosphere here was red hot, Leeds have largely looked to soak up the pressure and then hit us on the break and done that well. They were fortunate to perhaps to get that early goal with the collusion of the referee. But once they went, once they went 1 0 in front, we really haven't looked. Um, we look second best in all honesty we never look like we're going to get back into this game does Gary Rowett look like the kind of manager that has the tactical nous to unpick sides like Leeds they've defended very well we, we haven't ever really shown any artistry or any clue that we're going to get um, unpick the lock I'm trying to think of the right metaphor it's uh, man the match is a hard pick maybe, maybe I'll go with Ryan Leonard over long which as he came out three quarters of the game in so I'm going to go with Ryan Leonard I think we have the right ingredients, listeners. We just don't have the chef to produce the uh, the winning dish. I think that's how I'm going to put it to you, listeners. I'm becoming increasingly unconvinced of Gary Rowett. I know it might have taken me longer than most, but um, this afternoon has been a masterclass in throwing away every advantage you've got. It's Marco trying to jink his way down the left. They did a good job of clouting the Leeds player there, but unfortunately the referees give a free kick. What about you? Are you convinced of Gary Rowett and his tactical ability to undo opposition sides? We, we, we very much tried to take the game two leads this afternoon. A um, lot of bluster, a lot of uh, high energy in the, in the opening, was it about a quarter, quarter of an hour? Then we get broken down in turn. We get hit on the break and spend the rest of the game really huffing and puffing. Long, a long, quiet period after the goal. And then um, nothing really that uh, opens up the Leeds defence. So what about you? You tell me. Are you convinced of Gary Rowett and his ability to take the game to the opposition? I'm not questioning his ability to play the same game as uh, Farker has played here on us. They've soaked it up and hit us on the break. They've hit us very well. But we need to exploit the den, listeners, don't we? We have this weapon. Full house. It was a good atmosphere in here this afternoon. And it just feels so wasteful. I mean, how many times now this, uh, these past few months have we wasted and blown a full house situation here at the Den? A good few times. And it's almost like he doesn't know what to do with it. The, the Mill Chaos. That's the term I was trying to think of. The Mill Chaos, as he called it. Last corner into the uh, near post. So it's clear there it is. Mill nil. Leeds United three. Um, I think I've said enough. I'm going to go and have my dinner. Welcome back after the break, dear listeners, on the back of a very um, depressing result, I think, in the end yesterday. Joining me to chew over the cud is show regular Graham Payne. Welcome, Graham. Hello, Nick. And, a, and another Hello, show Nick, regular. Yeah. <laughs> another show regular is Michael Avery. How are you, Michael? Hello, Nick. Good afternoon, dear listener. I've just been past the den on my lunch break. They're still out there trying to score. I hope they're trying to clear up the bird shit from my seats. <laughs> I've, sent, oh. I've sent yet another bird shit email in, listeners. I won't bore you with the details, but um, pigeons. The pigeons must be Millwall fans, everyone, because they, they seem to regard uh, pigeon spiking as a challenge to be defeated rather than to learn their lesson and go somewhere else. But anyway, enough about pigeons. Um Gentlemen, three 0 yesterday. I, 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 I've watched the the extended highlights back on on the um, the, the club website today. Uh, and Graham, I was looking at the opening goal. Um, in the in real time, I thought there was a shout for a penalty. I'm not so sure 
having seen it, you don't really get a good close-up of the, the Leeds player who's on the floor. It may or may not have touched his hand. I don't know. Um, referee had a, a sign of that. But certainly the foul on Nisbet looked pretty clear-cut to me. And the referee, again, was about four or five yards from that. From that break, Leeds pressed on and got that crucial opening goal. I I know we are obsessed with referees and um, their, 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 their uh, incompetence, but that was a pretty... Pretty clear cut decision we didn't get yesterday. How did you see it, mate? Yeah, I mean, I sit that side of the ground, and um, you know, we all thought it was a foul, but obviously, he didn't give it. And then they broke on us really quick, and four passes later, it's back, it's in the back of the net. But you know, they're, yeah. they're them decisions that we, you know, we always don't seem to get. Once he's not given the foul, you've got to switch on, but they were, they were just too quick with their track, you know, the passes. And before you knew it, it was in the back of the net, wasn't it? But... Yeah, very fast on the break, Michael. I've um, got to give them their due. I thought they I thought they played Gary Rowett ball very, very well yesterday, Leeds, with their multi-million pound parachute money players. Um, that must have been a, a dream from Gary's point of view to see it played so well. Yeah, the thing is as well, I'll be honest with you, there was a little bit um, there was a little bit from me yesterday. I mean, I'm not sure whether this has got my ref head on. I'm very much like a sort of Sunday League red, a ref. I'm not anything, and I don't pretend to be anything higher. But when you watch these games, and other referees who, who, who are Millwall fans who go to the show, we, we sort of comment on it sometimes as well when we see things. There seems to be a little bit yesterday where, not the Nisbet foul in particular, we'll go back to, but there was a lot of kind of appealing for things. And even I'm sat there going, white light, that's just desperation more than anything else. That's not even a 50-50 well, that you're going by. for. By Millwall, by Millwall, yeah. Again, uh, again, right. not the Nisbet. With, so with, with the one with the Ailing, I'll be honest with you, I, even in real time, I didn't think it was a handball. So while everyone's yeah. running around screaming for penalties, they're, they're, and I'm like, well, he's clearly edited. From from where I was, and if I was a referee, I, I wouldn't give that as a handball. The foul, again, you've seen them given, you've not given, but uh, I mean, I, and I know with Leeds teams, their transition is just ridiculously quick. They've done it under the Elkstar. Um, even under Grayson, years ago under League One, when they was a bit more industrial, they could move the ball that quick. But mm. for me, you've got the supposed is damn ball, what some people say, oh, there's two decisions that went against us, right, that's one. The Nisbet one's two, fine, fair enough. There were still three, four, five passes that led up to the goal. And when you're playing a Gary Rowett style of football, where you have X amount at the back, was there three at the back, four at the back, wherever there was, and two holding defended, defensive midfielders. So essentially you're playing five or six at the back, and they get through you, like like the old proverbial hot knife through butter. Yeah. Let's forget about let's, let's forget about the tackle that happened ten seconds ago against Nisbet in the bet box. Why wasn't there enough people back covering that? That was nil nil. That was that wasn't so so I, I saw I saw his comments on BBC when he said obviously oh, I had to do the uh, stick or twist and go for it. Not a nil nil you don't. At nil nil you get yourself sorted, you get yourself structured, you don't you don't leave massive gaps everywhere especially at the back when you're playing a defensive way of playing football that Gary Rowett is supposedly so well known for and also which he gets criticised for being too defensive. But anyway, I'm labouring a point. No, he does get criticised for being too defensive. Um, I I, I think the problem is, I mean, I don't know what you think, Graham, but I I think the problem is that his natural game is to be it's to be defensive or whatever you want to call it, modern terms, low block, all this kind of nonsense. It's to be a defensive manager and hit on the break. The problem, of course, as we've, we've said many, many times on these shows and online and everywhere, is that at the den, the crowd want red meat. They want they they, they want front foot football. They, you know, Many of them would happily get back with Steve Morrison up front and 4-4-2 alongside Lee Gregory. It's, they want that old, that, that kind of full-on Millwall approach. Gary Rowett, I don't think A believes in that, and C, uh, secondly, doesn't really know how to do it. I think yesterday was a kind of a half assed attempt, but trying to get on the front foot. But I don't think he's truly comfortable playing that style. And I, don't, I think they must seep through to the players because it was bluster rather than anything incisive. No, we don't. And there was, you know, you had three what I call defensive hold midfield players in midfield. I know. If, Fleming, I think it was right maybe to drop him. But I would have mm. maybe give SA a go in that role. Campbell, he took a lot of stick on our side, but he just doesn't look fit. But he's not going to play. He doesn't play the Fleming role. And so we were very narrow. We were relying on um, Norton Cuffey and Longman to get down the wings, yes. But Longman, 
again, I don't know, he, he's playing on the left, but all the time he was trying to cut in on the onto the on his right side. Everything was he was coming in all the time. So I, I and and to play what he wants to play like Leeds, you've got to have pace, and we haven't got any pace in the side unless you bring on obviously a Mac or. But he, you know, he did come in, and then when he brought him on, he put him on a left wing back, which I, I couldn't get my head around. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that you know, row it. I don't know how many times have we said it a full house at the den, and it, he never, we never turn it, it always goes to a damp screw. We never, we never get what we expect with a full house at the den when, when row has been in charge. I said to you, Michael, I saw you briefly at the, at the full time yesterday. I was trying to think how many full houses we've we've blown in recent months. I mean, if you go back to the the Blackburn game at the end of last season, you've got the Bristol game, which was a full house, wasn't it? And then yeah. yesterday was a, apparently was sold out. Thankfully, there were some empty seats so that people didn't have to sit on the bird ship. But um, they, you know, we we seem to have he seems to have a knack. Gary Rowe has a seem has a knack of wasting big time games at the den full houses where the atmosphere is turned up to 11 he doesn't seem to know what to do um now i was looking at his track record obviously since he's, he came to us in 2019 we've we've consistently finished in the top 10 um eighth i think last season and there's eighths and ninths and elevenths so he's turned us into a a a moderately good championship side but he's not a big time man, is he? Doesn't he? Doesn't seem to handle these big occasions. He doesn't seem to have the the the, the artist palette as to know what to do with it. I think we're going to, you know, the, 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 what we're what we're coming down to here, chaps, is 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 Gary Rowett. Is he is he at the, the, the peak of his abilities to take us any further forwards? I, I'm starting to think, and a lot of obviously online do think this, that he's very much at the the. Um, the maximum level now. I'd just like to say, just quickly, you're speaking about the den atmosphere. I don't know about you boys, and I'm not I'm not knocking the crowd at all, because I thought the crowd brought some noise. It was a good sellout, even Leeds, to be fair to them. They always bring a good lot down. But it didn't feel like a mill Leeds to me yesterday. You know, normally from the first minute all the way up to the 90, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the ones where, you know, you would see the likes of Fabian Delph absolutely melt and Jermaine Beckford, you know, putting one on David Ford and Ford giving one back and, you know, all that kind of thing. And especially over the last few years when he was in the championship as well, it just didn't feel like a meal leaves for me yesterday. Could it be because it was too early in the morning and everyone was still half asleep? I don't know. But we just didn't feel like that type of game. Could it have been the football where after 10, 15 minutes, you just think, you know what, there's just no point getting too worked up for this one because it's just not, it, the game's just not appealing on the eye. You know, it's it, there's nothing going on that's really getting you getting you going, you know, and we're, we're, strongly, we're very strongly second fiddle at the moment. Also, I, I don't, um, I just, I just don't buy into the excuse when they were saying about how we, we played really, really well when it was just Leeds were so much better than us and budget this and budget that and all that kind of stuff. I don't think we played particularly well at all yesterday. I think Leeds quite easily moved the ball around us and normally at least um, over, over previous years, we'd at least give it a bit of a go. There was bits of me where I thought, well, they are better than us, but we don't even really seem to be giving it a go too much. And just like you were saying there, Nick, I put it on Twitter yesterday, and I'm not sure how many other people would have seen it. My lifetime, I'm 36. My lifetime, Kenny Jackett will always be the greatest manager at Mill Football Club. Until someone comes along and gets us promoted and all that. In the last 30 years, 30 odd years, I personally don't think there's many, if any, manager better than, than Kenny Jackett. But yesterday... I just think it was it stunk of Jacket's last few games in charge of Millwall where we would get in the opponent's half and then just not know what to do. Because Nisbet and, and you stand about tactics and how they how we play the game and all that kind of thing. Nisbet and Bradshaw play a certain way. They're not the type of player that, that keeps having to get balls just thrown up to them all the time. There just seems to be a complete and utter lack of ideas when we're in the final third. And that's been coming for quite a while now. But I just thought yesterday was clear as day evident we weren't going to score we weren't going to score we had two chances you said there graham mm. about um about was it longman kept coming in on his right foot i'd argue that's bad lead def bad lead defending keep letting him do it because it was so clear as day what he was doing you have a half decent fullback or center center half he ain't going to do that but we just seem to run out of ideas and it, it just it just was poor up front for me yesterday I'd agree we ran out of ideas. Um, 
even in the second half when he'd made the changes, he'd brought in SA, he'd brought in um, Fleming, and Marco came later. But there was a moment, I think, where Roman SA got the ball deep. He was on the cent- in the centre circle looking up with all the, the, the sea of shirts and there's no movement, no Millwall movement. There was no one making runs for him to, to, to play on to. And I think that, you know, the whole game really, once we went a goal behind Graham, I think we, it reminded me so much of when, when I was in primary school, there used to be a game where you could put your, your hand on somebody else's forehead and they try and swing punches and get you. And they couldn't get you because they were forever missing. And it, it felt a bit like that yesterday. We were, we were huffing and puffing, but we weren't really ever, ever dangerous. And I think, that's 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 become normal now under Gary Rowett at the Den. We don't seem to know how to be dangerous anymore. Do you think it's it's because he's a, he's a defensive minded manager fundamentally? And he just doesn't have that um, that ingredient. I think that is part of it, but I think also teams have sussed how he plays. And you look at the record. I think someone said yesterday. I think the last fifteen home games we've only won four. Yeah, so that, that tells you that you know whatever his tactics are. They don't work at home and teams have sussed us. And now, you know, I think the only chance we really, really had after they scored was probably Bradshaw at the start of the second half. That was the only clear yeah. chance where he, he shot and, he, 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 you know, the goalkeeper saved it. He's near post. But I can't think of any other chances we had during the game. Watching that chance back, the Nisbet was wide open in the middle. I mean, he was screaming for the cross rather than the, the tight-angled shot. I mean, I suppose... Any striker is going to go for a shot. It's in it's in their their nature to to try that. But the if the especially if they're back, on a goal bonus, <laughs> which they probably are. <laughs> but I mean, I was, this bit was screaming. He had he had the goal at his mercy. But anyway, there it is. It was, it was as you say, Graham had one chance in the second half. Um, the other two goals for Leeds both breaks out of defence, both really well executed. I think it was one followed the other quite quickly, didn't it? The two the second goal. Um, was a break from defence. We, we we didn't get put much resistance up to their movement right down the middle. They they passed and moved through us, as you said already, um, Michael, like like a knife through butter, which you'd have thought that a professional football manager would see that and maybe think, well, they're going to hurt us if they keep going down the middle because it was apparent through the first half and for the bulk of the second half that they were hurting us by this these very well-executed passing movements, but nothing was done to... Um, you know, to, to try and attend to that. I mean, George Savile dropped for some reason that I think most of us can't really fathom out. Would have been the obvious man to bring in, so at least try and stiffen up the midfield a little bit, but they just had a free day of it. Yeah, and, and the thing is as well, it's like we were planned. I'm, I'm on the BBC website now, just to have a quick look, and I know that obviously you can't take these too much as possible. So we had three at the back, supposedly. Um, yeah. Leonard, Leonard Cooper and Murray Wallace. Billy Mitchell sitting just in front. Norton Cuffey, who is a right back by trade, right right midfield, even though I didn't think he was playing too attacking wise yesterday. Denore as part of the four midfield who's just behind the front line, but I don't think he was one of two number tens yesterday. I, I thought from I mean I could get it wrong and, and you know what, tweet me if you like, I don't care. But I thought we were playing two defensive midfielders rather than one defensive well, midfielder did. and two attacking midfielders. So you've essentially got Five central defensive players, one fullback who's your winger, and there was still 20, 30 yards sometimes between the defence and midfield. And once again, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. Our best def- our best defender yesterday was an injury prone centre midfielder, and our second best defender yesterday was a fullback we've got on loan who we've got to send back next year. So <laughs> it's 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 a concern and the fact, I, I don't want to i don't want to bleat too much and i don't want to moan too much because as everyone knows me on this show i'm i'm the yin to harry's yang but um <laughs> but it's just that there, there were you, you're watching it yesterday and you're like as, as you said there graham like brad bradshaw shot near, near post effort if you're not gonna if you're not gonna drag it across to um nisbet Play, uh, aim for the other corner. Aim for the far corner. Pull it back across goal. Don't kick it at the goalkeeper. You know that's rule of thumb when you're when you're an attacker. And and it's like I, I don't know about you. Again, this this might be a little bit harsh to Nisbet, and I don't mean it to be, but he's reminded me a little bit of. Do you remember when we had Scott McDonald um, down at the Den under that awful period under um, Steve Lomas, where <laughs> after about 10 or 11 games. No, no, no. But you could see him after about 10 or 11 games where you could see there's a player there of quality. You know, he'd been at Celtic, he'd been at Middlesbrough, he'd been at all these clubs, he'd been abroad. And he's walking off the pitch and he looks frustrated because he's not getting, obviously, clearly what he's been promised he's going to get. 
And there was a couple of times yesterday with Nisbet when you could see that he's just, he's not getting the service. There's clear talent there, but you're yeah. just not playing yeah. to what it is. And that's what I was thinking. Again, it, it could be harsh to Nisbet comparing him to a, 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 a very angry McDonald, but there's similarities there. You've got a player on the field who, who reeks of talent, but you're not using it. Oh, I think we've got, I think we've got talent. I mean, I, I, I'd include Nisbet. I think he's a very, very good player. Um, and I think that's a, that's a big point. I think maybe you've made that one already, Graham, that uh, it feels like Rao has run out of ideas. Um, but we do have some great ingredients. It reminds me of, you know, like a cookery program where you've got a TV chef that doesn't know what to do with these fantastic French ingredients in front of him. And he's trying to turn out basic stuff. You know, it, 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 it is that kind of sense that he's got some really good players. And I include the youngsters in Marku and SA. I mean, I wonder whether another manager would be seeing some of the best talent that, you know, I look at this screen, there's plenty of years of experience looking back at me as I'm speaking, listeners. I, you know, I'm struggling to think of many players more with more raw talent than some of the boys we've got at the moment, Roman Essie, Ida Moe Marku, um, you know, and, and even to some extent, some of the uh, the lesser lights like Fleming and, 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 and Nisbet. But it's just it's being misused, Graham. I, I, that way, it's certainly not having the best brought out of them at the moment. Another would another manager be able to do that? That's that's the question, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, that, that's the question, isn't it? And um, how long how long do you give it before you decide whether to you know change it? I don't know because this season. I mean, you've I think I've, you've said it a few times. This season to me, it's just not got going at all. You know, no. we've scored four goals all season. You know, the games we've won, the Stoke one, that was, you know, we, we scored, but it could have gone up. They could have won easily. I think the only game we, I think we played quite well was probably Middlesbrough away. But, yeah, I mean, how long do you give it before you decide enough's enough? You, you can't, I don't know, you can't just carry on the way it is. One well, of the things, though, Graham, Graham, Graham you're, yeah. you're saying that in the nicest way, mate, and I get it, I get exactly what you're saying, yeah. but this is where you open a whole other can of words argument. Is the expectation too high now? Because right. I always used to remember, I always used to remember year after year after year. And Nick, if, if I'm lying, you can you can shoot me down here. But when 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 me, you and the guys like Harry, Mike, Hayden, Ryan, um, Aaron, Paul, we we do the shows right at the start of the season to predict the start of the season, without trying to be unre- without trying to be like pessimistic and negative. I'm normally the one who sits here and goes, why do you think we're all going to finish in the top six? Have you not seen the budget? Have you not seen the way we've been playing? Have you not seen our attendances? Have you not seen this, 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 this? Everyone suddenly... No, 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 no. I, I get we need to build. And I get from our point of view, we've spent money. I get it. I, I 100% get that. And I know people are going to tweet this show and tweet me. And by and all standards, we've spent about. money. But, but, by by me, but that's exactly my point. That's exactly my point. Last year, we just missed out on the playoffs. Yeah. OK, that was unlucky. The year before, I think, yes, we needed to have a little bit of a miracle um, against Bournemouth. I think we had to win something like 5-0 and the results had to go our way kind of thing. I get that. But the standard of the championship up until this season it was utter shit. Last year was the year we should have made the playoffs because it was a poor league. This year, look at, look at, no, but look at, the, look at the teams in it. You've got Leicester. A couple of years ago, they won the Premier League. Premier league. They've won FA Cups. They're playing the Champions Leagues. They've won Community Shields. Poorly run, get it, but still, Ipswich, poorly run, but just promoted from League One. 35, 36, 38,000 in gate money, which you're going to get um, in the till. Uh, loads of us, it. Southampton went down. Notoriously good side, Southampton, when they get relegated, because they've got a good youth system. So they play all these kids who will get them back up and they won't spend much money. Leeds, loads of money, parachute money. Plymouth, they bloody your nose after they've been promoted. Sheffield Wednesday, what, 40,000 they get. It's hard league. Everyone's moaning and groaning, which... They're entitled to because the performances have been shocking. They've been shocking. But are we a top six team challenging? I don't think we are. We're, we're probably not. No, I, and, and I take that no. point. I'm just looking at the same league table. I mean, you know, Middlesbrough, rock bottom at the moment, boys. I mean, you know, there's there's a team that would have expected once upon a time to have been in the Premier League, maybe as an outside European, you know, um, conference kind of level. So, you know, it's a, the, the wheel turns and, and teams can find themselves in Sheffield Wednesday. You've mentioned they're, they're second from bottom, big club. But I, I don't think that, I don't think it's a question of expectation management. I I believe we've assembled a decent squad at the moment, right? but it's a, it's a squad that's built on some flawed premises. One is that we're going to somehow defend our way through this tough league. And you're right, it's a, it's a very tough league, Michael. 
the problem is that we we, we don't then um, we don't really have the players that can can maintain that for long enough and we're also not clinical enough going forward so the the, the counter to that is that you play a more attacking style which Gary Rowett is not I think mentally um, geared up to to playing but you play a more flamboyant open style which means that you will win as many as you lose um, but you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna maybe enjoy watching it you're gonna see more entertainment and that's that's the kind of players that we've got because you look at our squad um we do have some talented players there, Graham, but we, we're not we're not exploiting them um, to their fullest extent. And the, you know, I, I understand entirely that you can be the be the kind of uh, the, the low block kings, as they would call them, defend your way, or you can play an open style and win one, lose one. But we're not we're not really falling into any category at the moment. And I, I don't think Gary Rowett is mentally able to play an open style, and. It, it, I don't know how, where it goes from here at the moment. I, I'm just not sure that he has anything new to offer us at the minute. Totally agree. But my, I think the expectations are a bit too high now. I, I do agree with that, because of the, the, especially with the championship this year. But the problem is is that where Rowett in the past has always relied on a solid defence, we're not solid in defence anymore. No, we're not. We're letting, no. In quite a few, we're letting in quite a few goals. So now we're at a stage where we're not scoring goals. On a regular basis, one in, we've not scored two in a gut game all season, but was leaking goals. So you know, to me, something has to change. You can't just carry on. Well, we'll we'll nick a game here and that'll do all right. You know, I think with the players we've got, as you say, I'm sure someone new ideas. Maybe the players have just had enough. He's been there four years now. And he, he, you know, you get to that stage where you know things mm. need a change, don't they? That's yeah. I think we're all getting to that stage, Graham. I think we're, you know, I, th- I think yeah. maybe he's maybe he's had enough. I, I think that might. I mean, you know, it's not a it's not a one way street. I think at some point you you know everyone starts to think, well, new scenes are needed now, new 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 scenery. But a game against Rotherham on Wednesday that feels like a big game Sunday, Michael, doesn't it? The home game to, to yeah, Rotherham, six pointer. Yeah. <laughs> a relegation <laughs> six pointer. Um, it, it feels like a big match. I mean, I think you know, if if we get another serving of Dower Gary Rowett pie, I think you know that the mood might turn. We've got West Brom away on Saturday with with the whole the the pantomime element of of Jed Wallace and, and all the rest of it. And you know, if we if we if we take a couple of um, bad performances, uh, I. I I don't know. I do think that the um, that the pitchforks might be out in the in in the car park pretty soon because I mean well, really we've had one breakdown of relationship this season. We've got, got we've got it back together again, but we're, I don't know if we're just barely holding on with each other at the moment. Gary mm. Rowett and the Mill support. It, it feels a bit like with, a, a marriage yeah. that's falling apart, doesn't it? With with <laughs> yesterday's game, yes, very true. Yeah, it's very loveless because neither of us care if the other one goes. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> And there's fans out there on the only fans looking at other managers constantly thinking, oh, I'd be yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, look at Walnut's toes. Yeah, let's get him in charge. Nathan Jones, isn't he got a cute face? Nathan and he Jones, Jones such good cool. numbers. Cashmere. Doesn't he look good in a chile? Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you what, though. But back, back to yesterday's game, though. Right. That, that's just it. What, what positives can we take from that? Because again, again, like my first point at the beginning of the call, I I must have seen a different game because some some of these people like I mean Stephen Jones of, of another pod, uh, that mm. Millwall pod will name it. We're all friends. We're all friends we're in the Millwall world. We're all Absolutely. mates. But he, he put he put a thing on tweet yesterday saying, "Yeah, oh, they're better than us. They weren't three 0 better than, they, than us." Well, I think they were. <laughs> I think they were pretty all better than us. And then, you know, Mike Hayden of our little community, Nick, he's Ooh. like, am I the only one who doesn't think this was a bad game? Well, in this group chat, Mike, yes, you are. <laughs> because, and that's why, well, that's why a little bit why I sort of half wanted to come on this call, because I'm a little bit like, am I just being too negative? Am I being too pessimistic? Because I, I sat there yesterday and I'm like, this, has, this isn't enjoyable. And like, I've, I've held my hands up before. I remember years ago when Swansea came down with them. And they, they absolutely put us to the sword. And I think there was a game against MK Dons where I think it was either MK Dons or Swansea, one of them two. But they scored a goal against us where even the home stand, the home fans stood up and was like, cool, that's a finish. And it was like 5-0 yeah. and it was like, cool, that is an absolute finish. So we, 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 we're a club who hold our hands up when we get out done. I mean, Spurs, when they've done us at White Hart Lane, when they beat us, what, 5-6-0, we'll hold our hands up. If you're better than us and you tonk us, do right. 
But I don't think we played particularly well yesterday. And I think that helped. I think that helped Leeds be as comfortable as they were. I don't think we was a team who gave everything and were outplayed. No, no, I'd, I'd agree with that. I mean, Graham, I, I, I thought Leeds were, they played their style well. We've, you know, we've, we've, we've said that a few times already in this conversation. I do think we slightly laid it on a plate for them, though. We made it easy for them to play their style. Um, for all their millions of pounds worth of players, we we shouldn't have been that far behind them. I, I, I agree, though, with Michael that we we were decisively beaten in the end yesterday. Can't argue with three 0 and I think it may have been we got we were lucky for it not to have been four or five nil by the end. I, I think that there's 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 a, a moment's coming soon where the, the club are going to have to decide whether they they stick or twist with Gary Rowett, and I'm not sure. He's a great escapologist. I will say that for him. He seems to get himself into. Um, these holes and get get himself out of it. So we may see like a, a dynamic performance at home to Rotherham. God knows it'd be nice to see something. I must admit, it's not been very enjoyable going to watch me all for a while, Graham, is it? I, I don't know how you find it. I, I find it a real, no. a real drudge. Totally, I felt, totally. it, was, it was an effort, it was an effort to get down there yesterday. And Michael's asking for positives. I, I think I do have one positive. I can't say much about the football because that was either huff or puff or look disinterested. But I will say, that was another sellout we had there with Chaps yesterday. It's Sunday morning, noon. Um, you know, that was a sellout crowd. That's the second sellout we've had in this uh, these early months of the season, let alone the ones, uh, the big crowds we had towards the end of last season. Um, the Mill support have been harangued not to sing naughty songs. And, you know, I get the, we're in, we're in modern football, so Sky Television's there, and we're, we're you know, we're, we're in danger of... Um, developing ourselves a bad reputation. <laughs> but, you know, for, despite that, there was a strong support. It was, it was a really good noise in that stadium, but we're just yeah. not being served up the, the dishes that will keep us going, Graham. I mean, I, I think that's a fundamental problem here, mate. I think that the, the support yeah. was a positive, but it's being misused. It's being wasted at the moment. Totally agree, mate. You know, I mean, even in the start of the second half and like the 15, before they got that the second goal, the crowd really tried to lift the team. They really went, yeah. you know, the, the absolute Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with that. And unfortunately, you know, the team didn't, couldn't match it. But going back to your point, I agree. It's not enjoyable watching Millwall at the Den. And I think you go, I think the, probably the last game I've enjoyed at the Den was probably when we beat Sheffield United. Three yeah, two I was just looking season. three two. Yeah, Millwall yeah, chaos. That that day, game that I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably the last game I've you know we come away thinking, well, we've been what a great game. You know, it's it's I don't know, I really don't. But it, it, these poor asses, they won't. You know, people will start to drift away. I think if this continues, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you, Graham. I'll be honest with you. I don't even. <laughs> I, I don't even really fit. I mean, and I hate to say it, I really, really do because I love this football club. I mean, my, my, one of my boys is named after one of our players. You know, like I'm, I'm one of those type of fans. You know, yeah. like, but it's just, it's just the whole club seems just flat at the moment. And there's good people there, you know, working mm. hard in their departments behind the scenes. But it's just like, you know, it's, it's just little things. Nick, we laugh, we jest about it. It's fucking bird shit all over where you sit. You know, like we, we, you know, you, you've got you've got fans tweeting left, right, and centre about the state of the club shop and and yeah. things they're all doing not turning up or it's not turning up, and then this and then that, and then there's there's radio silence. You know, you've got you've got fans queuing up for ages outside because the the scanners broke on the new state of the art turnstile that that scans the tickets. You've got you know, it's just that I don't want to be out of order and I don't want to be horrible to the club. You support a club, and this is what I said recently. You know, like my boys could tell me, you know, like, oh, do, you know, are you, are, are, you know, about being a Millwall fan. It's like, well, you no, know, you're not a fan. A fan, someone who just sits and watches how to get on. Support is people who put their money in, who put their time in, who put their effort in. You know, like I'm, I'm, I know sometimes we can be the panto villain, but it's things like with the supporters club. You know, we we're giving our time to to try and improve things for people, and yeah. and help out and get this stuff. But it's just like. You know, it's just like a, it's just like a grunt noise at the moment. It's, it's like, like wading through. Got to go all this weekend. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, and I didn't want, I don't want to be like this type of fan, or I don't want this show to turn into this kind of thing. But there's no match day experience at the moment, is there? Really, in my no. opinion. Well, my match day but... experience is sitting, sitting in bird shit, Graham. So that's my match day experience. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I was, you're right. You're right, Mike. I mean, no, no one. I, I generally don't do this show to have a dig at the club. I mean, there are people out there just enjoy having a poke at, pe- at people in the club, authority, or whatever you want to call that. That's not me. But there are some basic things that you're entitled to expect as a uh, as a as a fan, customer, whatever you, way you want to put it. I mean, all joking aside, you're entitled to expect some pretty basic. You know, you're entitled to go to your seat and not have it it's, it's shitty. Literally, um, you're entitled to buy your kids' shorts. I mean, Michael, you you know, you, you put some a photo of your boy's shorts, uh, they've got a new, the new orange kit, full kit, and you haven't even washed it, and the badge has fallen off. I mean, this is just poor, this is just poor, um, almost a contempt for the customer, isn't it? I mean, any yeah. other business, yeah. and, and any other business, other business, other than football, yeah. you wouldn't, that would and fail. Remember, yeah. it would and go we've there, had time yeah. to, to go into too much detail, but we returned it yesterday. All fine, you know, like the bad fit, it fell off. Like, to be fair, luckily it was out of my three kids. It's the one who was a bit more blase about things. So he was a not sh- shoulder shrug, he was disappointed, but he didn't kick up his pink too much. But I um, I took it back to the shop, or, or to be fair, my sister did it for me. First thing they said was, I'm not sure if we can take these back, that you cut the labels off. And I'm like, what, would you expect kids to play football with all the labels still on? You know, and then you, you, and, you haven't and, even and that... washed it. You're entitled to at least one wash before it falls off, and you, <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, I'm going to call it quits. I want to say a big thank you, Graham Payne, for joining us uh, this lunchtime. Thank you, Graham. Cheers, Nick. And Michael, thank you for taking time out of your day from work. I uh, do appreciate you, mate. Thank you for joining us. No problem at all. And don't worry, dear listener, the happy go lucky Michael that we all know and love, and <laughs> never throw any insults at, will be back next time. And, uh, thank you to you too, dear listeners, for tuning into this misery edition of Achtung Millwall. <laughs> uh, we'll be back. We've got a midweek game, God help me. Um, Rotherham Wednesday night. I'll yeah. be back after that um, with the next edition. Until the next edition, uh, Arriva Dirty Millwall. And bye for now. Achtung Millwall. Just before we leave today's miserablest show, dear listeners, uh, we've got the answers to the punditgames.co.uk question. It was a Croatian midfielder from the uh, 2000s, played for Spurs and Pompey most famously, as well as the Croatian national side. And that man was Nico Krancija. Krancija. I hope you enjoyed that little question. It's a bit of light relief from the misery of yesterday's defeat at home to Leeds. Thank you for listening to Achtung Mill, dear listeners. Arrivederci Mill, and bye for now.